is. Here we are. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good, good evening. evening. No matter where you may be, we want to welcome you in today. And if you would, take a moment as soon as you come in to uh, to write in the chat. We'd love it when you write in the chat as much as you want. Dyrene is first in the well, chat. Well done, Dyrene. Really we good welcome morning. you from the Philippines. It is... I think late night for late her. Night, late yeah, night. that's my guess. Is Here, that, here's is the that thing. right, Dyrene? When when you write in the chat, we, we feel we're part of a bigger community. And we love it when people take time just to comment. You can comment on something we're saying, or you can comment on something someone else is saying. Yep. That's okay. All right. So also straight in off of the get-go is Michaela coming in from Portugal. Whoop, whoop. Welcome in, Michaela. And Lara coming in from Switzerland. Okay, Dyrene just confirms it's 9 p.m. And Lala says, good afternoon. So we've got people in- good Morning, afternoon, afternoon evening. evening. So high five, we got that one. Woo, perfect. Great. Perfect. We are so glad you joined us today. This is Doozy Live, and our theme today is living life by design, not by default. Mm. And we're so glad that you've joined us. One thing I love about these themes is once we decide what the theme is gonna be, we start breathing this. We it start checking our life expand. out. We start talking to everybody about it. So when we get to this point, it is like, ooh, here we go. <laughs> uh, Cheryl Potter is in from Marlette, Michigan. Dale is also coming in from Michigan, from Flint. So they're also morning. Thank you and welcome in, everybody. Uh, this theme today is amazing. Mm. Uh, living life by design, not by default. When I think of my life, for example... I, at, from a very young child, knew that I was going to be a missionary nurse. Mm. Well, the default for me, um, as my parents have jumped on, welcome in, you know this story to be true. The default for me was to be a missionary nurse. In my home, I loved it because my parents, my family invited all the missionaries, all the guest speakers over because there was eight kids in our family and what's 10 more or five more or two more. So they invited uh, people over or so I thought but actually I believe it was by design because they wanted to expose us mm. to missions I heard that they dedicated uh, I heard later that they dedicated us not only to Jesus but to missions so my default was to go um, as a missionary to Africa and to be in the jungle as a missionary nurse and so when I thought missionary nurse that was my default picture well, the design turned out as it continued to develop and I became a registered nurse and I was going towards mission and Dan and I were married, we began to design what that life would look like, especially focused on the next generation and impacting them to know and love Jesus as they know themselves and love others. So I think this design versus default is a very cool topic that we're going to unpack today. And, and we had someone recently say, is it really okay to, to design your life? Is that, is that good? Is that bad? And I, I was looking at the scripture and it's so interesting that you have um, Abraham that God said in Genesis chapter 12, I am blessing you that you bless others. By design, he knew I'm living my life to bless others. You have Joseph. He gets that dream. He is royalty. That mm. dream reveals he is royalty. And he designs his life even in the midst of all the pain around that. You have you have stories of, of the children of Israel. They get the Ten Commandments. You are to design your life around these commandments. You get uh, Esther. Esther at a very young age was part of this beauty contest. She realized her life was about influence. She designed her life around influence. Jesus, when he came into the world, he says it very clearly, I've came, come that you may have life. life. His life was designed to give life. Paul actually, I think is in 1 Corinthians 13, talks about love. We are to design our life around love. There's faith, hope, but the greatest is love. So is this something that is part of the Bible? Definitely. Yes. And I think too often we, we almost get that impression that when you follow Jesus, you have to become 
selfless. You have to sort of disappear. You know, Jesus works through you. When your life is designed in a special way, according to his plan, his kingdom comes through you. More of Jesus and more of us, because as we show up more, he shows up more. So this is absolutely biblical. Do you believe this? Absolutely right. And I want to show up today. I'm feeling like you've got a passion humming in there. Oh, this is big. Passion. Watch out, world. Here we are. This is big. You know your life is a remarkable story, an adventure that only you can create. We exist to motivate and equip you to live fully, fully alive. alive. Today in this doozy life, we are talking about living life by design, not by default. Mm. Now, I just saw a comment that we were... Some people can't hear us. If you can hear us, say yes. If you can't hear us, say no. Because okay, I just got a good. comment, a couple comments that can't hear you. Yes, so sir. if you can hear us right now, please write yes. If you can't, please write no. All right. You're responding, so I'm guessing we that some help of you, you design, can hear. Design your sound here. Yeah, that's great. So when I think about probably the most basic form of living life by design, not default, it would be the question that many of us have been asked for a long, long time. What do you want to be when you grow mm. up? That is a little bit of a pathway or a design or a dream. What is it that you want to be when you grow up? So I just invite you there in the or chat. Even a better question maybe is, do you want to grow up? No. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> uh, what was the design, what was the um, design thought of each of you that you had as a young child, someday I want to be or I want to do. Maybe it's something that you're aiming for right now. If you can get that in mind, that will help us uh, as we chat. And I'm hearing a lot of yeses. Yes, 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 yes. Good. So most people can hear us. That's great. Okay, awesome. And Michaela, welcome in from Georgia. And she can hear. That's awesome. I'm glad you can hear. We want to um, show you uh, this presentation that we've been working on because as we look at designing your life, we have to understand what are the principles of design. And so we're going to look at some principles of design and hopefully take those things to apply into our daily life. So this is a part of the Fully Alive Revolution, push forward living life by design, not, not by default. By default. So just having a look. Oh, Kim Kukura, she's jumping in from Virginia. Welcome in. So Dyreen says, I envisioned myself to be a banker and a teacher when I was younger. Awesome. Awesome. I, I would love to hear from others of you. What were you thinking about when I grow up? What am I aiming for now? What is your design focus direction? We're going to unpack it a lot today, but just so we can have that in mind, and that helps us. Dyreen, a banker. Uh, Lara says, I told everyone I wanted to become a midwife. Okay. Great. Great. Yep, and mine again was missionary nurse. And I became a missionary, and I became a nurse, but in a very different form and picture than as a young girl I was dreaming about. Mine was always, I'm going to be a magician. Check. Check. That happened. That happened for sure. Kim said, I wanted to be a mom and a teacher, then homeschooled my kiddos. Homeschool, yep. So she did both. Yep. That's awesome. So good. Super, super. Okay, keep it rolling in. Living by design, not by default. Dan, will you tell us just a little bit about design thinking? Here's a slide that kind of lays it out, but unpack that for us. Design Thinking. Well, design works in everything. Sometimes we think of a designer just designing a house, but we use design in everything we do. If, if you're going to build a chair, there's design thinking that's needed. If you're going to do a program, we used to write Teen Street programs. There is design thinking that's needed. Uh, so when I was a graphic designer, always you, you went to this design thinking mode as you moved forward. When I were to, to create magic shows, even from a very young age, I had learned these are the steps of designing. And, and so we want to go through and look at each of these because these probably, this is still the way I design my life every day, looking at these uh, five different areas. Okay, so we've got, we've got five, are those called sexagons? 
sex hexagon is five and there's six sides. So I'm guessing it's a sexagon. I just say it's Some, a stop sign. Somebody help me. Okay, stop signs, but stop we don't sign. want to stop. We want them to be go signs, This is how right? you don't stop. So here are the five the five parts of design thinking. Can you take us yeah. through that? So the first area is need. If you don't see a need, you don't change anything. There's a lot of people today that they're very anti-change because they don't open their eyes and they see the need. I think every day there's need. You need a new chair. Someone needs a show. Someone needs a curriculum written. Someone they need needs love. a computer. They you need start help. with need. They need food. From need, you go into purpose. You have to ask the why. It's the gold circle. and You have to get to that core point. What is the purpose of this chair? What is the purpose of the show? What is the purpose of my life? Of this time together, of where you're going and what you're going to do. So then you have to go to the next three. And they're like stair steps. You start off high with what are the ideas? Every idea is okay. You green light this thing. What, what could happen? And then you go into, we're going to take all those what ifs and make a plan. And from there, you're going to do it. That's the action. And, and so that, that's, that's the design. That's the design thinking, the design theory uh, of most things. Now, this is, this is the cap slide. So if you're on a phone or something where you can capture your screen, snap it. We're give talking give about a little doozy a pose. Good. Okay, hopefully you were me, able to snap that. Let me just show you how these things worked away from life, away in, in a magic show. Okay, so if I was doing a magic show, I would start off by getting a phone call. No, go back. Oh, go back. okay, sorry. I would start off by getting a phone call. Someone would say, I need you to do a magic show. The need would then would be my response, why? What is your purpose? What do you want to accomplish? Someone may say, I want to do a magic show. We're inviting the community. It's going to be evangelistic. We want to get people saved. Great. Got the That's purpose. That's the need. Someone purpose. else, it's, it's a birthday party. Grandma just turned 90. Great. I want to know what the purpose is. And then I go away and I begin, what could I do? And I, I maybe will create you know, 20 different magic tricks that will work. But in a great magic show, you rarely have more than five tricks. So I would then plan. I want to start at this level. I want to take people up, probably stop something at the beginning that's very quick, going to grab their attention, uh, probably going to make them turn and laugh with their neighbor. Then it's going to Good. go down a little bit. Then halfway, I'm going to do something spectacular. Then it's going to come down a little bit. And at the end, I'm going to leave them with something they're going to talk about for the next week. That would be the plan. And then on the date, I would arrive and I would do it. So that would be the way I and would And it would be good. It would be amazing. Yes. And I would get $25. <laughs> that, was, that was really big money back that in the was day. big money. Yeah. So this is design thinking. There's a quote up, up the top, and it says, be the person you want to have in your mm -hmm. life. And we were thinking about this. What does this quote mean? So be the person. This is not saying be somebody else. Actually be you but be the best version of you and somebody that would be so awesome, you would want to have them right. in your life. Right. It's like the people are going, I'm just looking for Mr. Right. Well, then you need to be Mrs. Right. You, mm -hmm. you need to be that person that you would want to have step into your life. A couple more people saying what they wanted to be. Yeah, I just, I just want to say we're looking today at living life by design, not by default. So we're going to take this design thinking and apply it to living our life and help you um, unpack your design for your life. This is the tool or this is a formula. And we want to give a lot of formulas and tools to tell people, no, it just helps. Not here is something to do, but we're not going to show you how, but here is a way to do that. So Hannah says, I wanted to be a vet. Hmm. Not what I have in mind now, though. Yeah, it's all right if things change as our life changes for sure. Things change for me as well. And that's a great example, Hannah. You could be a chicken vet. Oh, Hannah is great with chickens. chickens. We had a Zoom call just recently. I guess it was on Saturday morning with a group of us. And Hannah brought her chicken to the meeting. Loved it. It was one of my favorite parts of it. So that's cool. She's good with animals. She could be a chicken whisperer. I think she is. She was great with her chicken. What did mom want? <laughs> All right. And Cheryl says, I always wanted to be a nurse and wife and mother. When older teen, I wanted to be a missionary also. Thought I would be in Africa, 
but it was in Michigan instead. Very similar, very similar. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so let's jump into living life by design and using this design thinking, starting with need. Hey, you said I have to start off with a realization. People that don't design their life don't even realize they can. I, I know a lot of followers of Jesus or Christians that they don't do anything because they're afraid to do something wrong or they're afraid they're going to offend someone. So they don't even start asking the questions. Mm. They just, they, they believe that came Christians mm. just to follow the Christian crowd. It is default. They don't take time to design. God created people unique and special. We need to take time to look at how has he created us? What, what do I need to, to grow in my life to show up to bring God's kingdom. So there's that realization that sometimes we just need to wake up some people. You may be listening today saying, well, I've never designed my life. I want to tell you, wake up. It's time. <laughs> it's time to design your life because the world needs you to show up. So you need to realize, hey, design is the way to go. Oh, yeah. It's true. Okay, he, he feels it. So the picture I have for designer default uh, that really helps me understand it is if you're in a flowing river, flowing river, and you are like floating along or swimming along. I don't know if any of you have been in one like that. And you lift up your feet. You do not stay grounded to the ground or you do not hold on to something. You're just going to go with the flow Oof. and you're going to go down the river Oof. and you might hit a tree or a rock or depending Oof. on the river, whatever it will be. That would be default. In the same way, as we're living our life, if you are just living your life without a design, understanding the need of the world and the need for God to be working in and through us, you will just respond spontaneously, day by day, whatever comes along. This is what happens when people who have a lot of peer pressure, who are influenced by peer pressure, they end up by going by default. Uh, this is people who um, would potentially be bullied or sometimes when we're in our family and we don't know and our parents or our grandparents or our family or our culture tells us which way to go down the stream. And when we're not making a design, we just end up going with the flow. I just want you to know that you've never read a novel about someone's life or a biography about someone's life who did things by default. Never. It just doesn't happen. You they don't sign. And I read this book about this person that did what everyone expected them to do. No, the, the, it's not a good story. A great story is when someone realizes, hey, God created me with a purpose. I need to show up in that. I need to live by design. Great. I, it's time for a poll. Okay. So I just wonder if you would mind doing the poll. And the poll is, most days I live my life, you've got two choices. By design or by default. Now, you can be totally honest because no one knows what you're hitting That's right. unless they're in the room with you. As always in the poll, you want to say a little of both. You want to have multiple choices. But, but if you can choose one, yeah, most days. Most days, I, I live, live my, my life, life by, by, go ahead and. Design or default. Push that pull, okay? So. Oh, it's moving back and forth. All right. What do we got so far? We started with 100% default, and it's going back and forth, isn't it? We're at 60 it? and 40 at the moment. 60% design and 40% by default. 50-50. 50-50. I think this is a great question. Isn't this a great question to think about? I, Am I today living by design or default? I want to say design, but is is it true? Thank you for you for those of you who are being honest. At the moment, we've got 62% default and 37% by design. Get a photo of that. I, I'm, I'm guessing that's mostly it. And I just want to show you here. Oh, you can't see it just down that little corner there. But that's, there we go. That's it. So we got 62% by default and 37% by design. Thank you so much for taking taking that poll. So we've, we've looked at the realization. You've just taken a poll. You realize... I am doing it mainly by design or mainly by default. So let's go on to the next one. All right. So we've got our need, the realization, the next design thinking Ooh. part. We're going to just unpack a little Your bit. Your purpose. Your purpose. Your this purpose. is that purpose. Once you know the need, 
And what is the need? How do we identify the need? The need in the world, the need for ourselves. Oh, the need, the the need, need is more of what, what... I guess we're popping back here to the need just a little bit. I think the need would be more the... First of all, we have to realize I need to show up. Okay. And I think you also need to realize as a follower of Jesus, God has designed us to show up, to design our life, to move forward in something, but also the need of the world. So I think it's all of those things. We, we need to come to that realization that we're on this planet because there is a need that only we can fill. And God wants to use us to do that. Yeah, some of us are would probably be more specifically in a need space for our work, for our ministry, for our life, for our direction. And your need might be a bit more specific than that. If so, we'd love to hear about that in the chat. What is the need? And now on to the purpose with that in mind. Well, once you understand I am needed, you realize that, you have to design your life, but how do you start? You have to start with understanding what is my purpose? Why am I alive? Mm -hmm. That one of the most important questions you'll ever figure out is what's the purpose of life? And I don't believe everybody has the same purpose. Mm -hmm. I think God has created us very uniquely and we need to stop and look around. What is it that, that when we see the news, it breaks our heart. That is probably something that that you need to step into. I, I know on Facebook it's so easy to just start condemning everyone or praising everyone or whatever, but that is actually doing nothing. Mm -hmm. When you when you really really have a purpose, when you have a why, you step into that society and you say, "How can I make a difference there?" The last few days, I've been really concerned about a friend of mine who is very very sick. It is not leaving my mind. Always I'm thinking, what can I do to help raise money for this person who is sick? It is, it's like bubbling up. It's something I have to do. And I've got like three or four ideas of how I can help raise money for that person who's given their life in missions, who now is, is in a hospital. How can I help raise money for them? So there is this, I, I, something that always gets me is justice. I, I, don't, think it's, I don't think it's fair yeah, that, that someone who's given all their life doesn't know how to pay their next bill. So I don't condemn the system, I show up. So that's part of why I'm alive. Yeah, and I think this purpose uh, and the exact way that we flow in our life by design and not just by default uh, also has to do with like our core purpose in mm. life. For me, um, my purpose statement or my passionality statement is I influence potential through connections. Mm. Now, I love people, and I love to show up and give an influence and connect them, uh, for example, to a doozy live show like we're doing right now that will help give you a resource and something to hook your life on. This is something that I'm trying, we're trying to connect to you. I'm trying to influence you to grow and live the most potential as your fully alive self. And that's kind of how my purpose comes out. My purpose, Loving people and connecting them through yeah. influence. My purpose, I write it down quite often. I live fully alive so I can love God, love people, love myself. Mm -hmm. Every day, that's my mantra. I, I speak that thing out. That is why I am alive. Mm -hmm. And that, that pushes me forward. I'm, I'm just going to invite you now to write what is your purpose. Let's take a poll. Let's take a poll because I, ask, I actually ask a little bit about this on a poll. Okay, let's open. Old time. Love that. Which which statement best describes you? Would it be, I have a clear purpose of life statement. I know my purpose, but it's not a, in a statement. It's just there. I know it, but I don't have a clear statement. I feel it in my gut. Like, yep, that's probably more of me. Dan's got a life statement he just said, and mine is like, it's like this. Boom. Mm -hmm. Um, the third one, I'm not sure of my purpose. You're still trying to figure out why am I alive? What am I designing my life towards? Or I've never really thought about my purpose. So that's also a fair, a fair one. So take a mo moment with the music. Which statement best describes you? It started out 100% the second one. I know my purpose, not in a statement. And now it's moving. Mm -hmm. It went to 50-50. Together with, I'm not sure right of now, my 75, purpose. Oh, it just changed. 20% say it's written in a statement. 60% would say, 
I know it, but not in the statement. 20% would say, I'm not sure what my purpose is. I know this is a, a tricky question, so we we'll give you a moment. Yeah. And then um, would love, would love for you in the midst of it to say, what is your purpose? If you know what is your Even purpose. Even just maybe a word that may be within your purpose. Yeah, what is your purpose? We're looking at the moment. Um, I have a, let's see, I'll take a little snap. Right now, I have a statement, it's 66%. I know it, but it's not a statement. It's 50% and 16% saying, I'm not too sure about my purpose. You said 66, but the first one is 33. 33, sorry. 33. Dyslexia moment. So here it is. 33%, I have a clear purpose statement. 50%, not in a you statement. 16, oops. 16%, I'm not sure of my purpose, and zero, I never really thought about purpose. Thank you for your purpose. honesty. Thank you for thinking through these things. That's why we do the polls, so all of us can take time to think about it. Yeah, so what is your purpose? Can you say once again, what is your purpose statement? I live fully alive so that I can love my God, my world, and myself. Great. And mine, uh, not clearly in a sense, I influence potential through connections to try to help people know their God, their self, and their world, and make an influence as they live that fully alive life. Kim is saying to carry hope through presence. Ooh, I love it. You do that. Show up with hope. You show up with two ears and one mouth. And, I, and Lara was saying earlier, um, one of her needs is to listen more mm. and not just talk. Thank you, Laura, for, for sharing that. And Kim Kim is trying to live that as well, um, in that in that space as well. Anybody else, what is your purpose? Why are you alive? If you're not sure yet, if you don't have that statement, like 60% of you are, it's good to have the concept, but also to formulate that into a statement. What What is the benefit for you of having that clear statement you said that you remind yourself of every day? What does that look like? Well, statements are very important to me. I think the, well, the Bible is full of these statements that, that motivate and equip you and, and refocus you. So like Susie has things written on her mirror. I write things in my journal. It, it makes it intentional. Yeah. It, I think we... Default is never intentional. Default is unintentional. I want to live a life of, of design, of design. And so I have to intentionally say, why am I alive today? I am living today so I can love my God, love people, and love myself. How am I going to fit that in my schedule? How is that going to look? Mm -hmm. Am I going to go to bed having not done anything towards my purpose? Well, if I don't know what my purpose is, I'll do that every night. But if I know That's it. That's by default. If I know it, I'm going to focus on those things. Right. So Kim has her statement put out. Those of you who don't have your statement, in what category do you feel like it would be? How, how would you categorize it? Mine is loving people and going towards people, connecting them to who they are in Christ. I, used, I have a, a life verse. It, it also speaks towards purpose. It's in Psalm 71, 17. Since my youth, O oh God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your mighty works. Even when I'm old and gray, do not forsake me, O oh God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your might to all who are to come. That verse gets me excited every single day. It is part of that purpose. How do I love God, love the world, love myself? That verse is part of that realization. Yeah. Laura says... I had once a passionality sense, which went something like, I create communication through vision. Nice. Thank you for sharing that. That was back at the GO conference. So a number of years ago. Years ago. That's all right. Sometimes we find that, and that gives us a little bit of a direction in there. Uh, I just want to put a plug. The Fully Alive Revolution is coming starting in September. This is a, a membership group that we're inviting people into and we're going to spend a chunk of time helping us find our purpose and our statement and how to put that into life practice. So sometimes during Juicy Live, we're just we're just talking about maybe the why or or what this looks like. But in, in the Fully Live Revolution, we're going to spend all of our time really looking at how do you apply it to your life? How do you live successful 
in this pattern of life? How do we get support from each other? How do we give to each other? Yep. So we're moving together in the fully alive revolution. Yeah, Dyrene says, I'm alive to give a breath of fresh air to those who can't breathe. Oh, I love to that. To encourage and uplift one's soul. Oh. That is far out. Put, put, Boom. Yeah, put the hashtag on Hashtag that. far out, Dyrene. Wow. Thank you. I want to breathe. Fresh air. air. Fresh, Fresh air, air to those that. who can't breathe to encourage and uplift one's soul. Love that's that. Great. That's so not, That's so actually refreshing, even the way she stated it. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else who want to share uh, towards where you're at? That's great. But we're going to move into the green lighting area. Once you understand, here's the need. I need to show up. Here's the purpose. Here's my why. The center of everything has to be that why. And I think this is what we don't often talk about. When you come to know Jesus, you, you refocus on your why because yeah. you realize you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. But if we just stay there, I know my why. I know purpose. You, the kingdom is going to come through that. You've got to start saying how. How do we do that? How, how? do I do that? How do I love my God? How do I love my neighbor? How do I love myself? And the more I love myself, the more I can love my neighbor. The more I love myself, the more I appreciate God made me. I didn't make myself. So all these things go together. But how? That is a very, very important question. And like in my magic show, lots of ideas are needed. How do I do that today? I, I'm not just looking for, okay, I am going to go give flowers to my neighbor. Great. But let's let's write down 20 things yeah. that could, because when we do that. The more ideas, the better. When we live our purpose out, when we live by design, I guarantee you, you're going to be living fully alive. Because you're going to be living you, not somebody else, or not someone's else's expectations. So many of us as followers of Jesus, we're living expectations of others. I want to tell you something. Expectations never really matter. They don't. They stop us. When we really want to move forward, we look at rhythms. We yeah. look at habits. Those are the things that move us forward. Expectations, I would say 99.9% .9 stop us in our tracks. We need to have momentum, not expectations. So let's think about ideas just a little bit. Now, we've got Dan. I'm out of breath now. <laughs> it's so exciting, isn't this it? It's is good stuff. So we've got Dan's way of doing it, and we've got my way of how you roll out this, um, your purpose of life. You understand the need, the purpose, now the ideas. Dan is good, if I just may say, of coming out, out of the, th out of the blue air, he comes up with, with, just ideas and ideas. He's an idea factory, an innovative machine. Quite a nice one. That's the way God made me. That's exactly right. Now me, it comes to me through some kind of a trigger, some kind of a input. That's why I love to research and do um, learning, read books, listen to podcasts, audio books. And we, we just got back from a five-week road trip and we listened to three books and lots of podcasts huge amount of discussion so we've had a lot of input and so the ideas for me begin flowing like this another way my ideas flow is by journaling or by writing something down and i make long lists and i reflect another way to know yourself and to know what's going well is if you journal reflect or have a chat with somebody that you know and love and they know and love you you can process out what went well Matt Taylor, our friend, he writes in his journal every day what went well. He's trying to reflect, and that also can be an idea generator. What are some of the ways that you generate ideas? What? It, how does it get triggered, or how does it happen for you? No idea. It just, <laughs> just happens. I mean, exactly. this morning, Susan, I was still in bed, and she says, but what about this? And I woke up with, what about this? So I turned over and I grabbed my journal and I wrote a whole page on what about this? It was it about just, the Bible and yeah, how, Bible how and people fully alive live and, by design, not default. And I just, all these, oh, that's Abraham and that's that's Isaac and that's Joseph and that's Daniel. And, and oh, Dick, David did that. And it was just coming and it was, yeah. I think you don't have ideas 
if you don't expose yourself a lot. I think most of my ideas come from, I've exposed myself to the word of God. I've exposed myself to nature. You want to talk about magic? I've exposed myself. You want to talk about deception? I have no deception. And so I've exposed myself to things so that when I'm in a place where I need to have ideation, those things come back and I can make those connections. All right. We'd love but here's the difference between me and Susie. I make those connections. I talk about it with Susie. And then she goes and tells everyone else what I come up with, which is perfect. Because I'm the motivator. She's the <laughs> it works so good. It's like I'll hear her on the phone and she's saying the stuff that we talked about. That my idea went to her. And now it's going to other people. And I like, caught it. Ooh, ooh, and I'm ooh. going for it. That's the body. Right. And then I throw it back to you. The people said. And then he gets more ideas and he gets more challenges. And actually, this doozy life came from chats that we had with many of you who are right here in the doozy live and a book that we were reading and there was one statement that said are you designing your life or are you living by default and it was like oh okay we gotta unpack that oh. more and here we are here we are okay there's a couple more people who put um notes right here cheryl says the verse is matthew 22 37 to 39 and mark 12 30 to 31 have been my heart's desire so I often repeat it to keep reminding myself of my purpose. And that's the passage where Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. And I got to grow up in a home that that verse was talked about and lived almost every day. So it's like that's osmosis purpose. type of thing. And it's perfect. And that's Let purpose. It out. That's great. Not sure I always do that, but I know I need to work on it. That is living by design and not default. And Excellent example. Mom, you love people in your sleep. I just want <laughs> no guilt there. You, you are always loving people. All right. So we talked so far about the three parts. First, the need to live by design or default. We also talked about your purpose. Why am I alive? We talked a little bit about ideas. I would love to know That's from like a you. Garden. Plant those ideas. What are the ways or the areas or the setup for you? that allow you to flow in ideas. So what do idea flows look like? Dan gets it out of the thin air. Oh, I no. need input. What about you? Not necessarily, because most people go to Disney World to ride the rides, to see Mickey Mouse. I go to find ideas. I go most every place to find ideas. I am an idea hoover, like a, <laughs> a vacuum. So I'm always looking for ideas. Yeah. For example, we just were at the wedding of one of one of our um, teenagers, one of our, our missionary teenagers who we grew up with, his him and his family. And so we were at the wedding. We were at the reception. And here's Dan with his little black book. Where's your black mm -hmm. book? Oh, yeah, here it is. He always has it with him. Here he is sitting over there with his leg crossed and his little black book getting ideas at the at the reception dance. This these two pages were totally written during the dance. Now, I was dancing as well, but every once in a while I had, quite to, nice I had to come in right a little bit because there was so much input in so that room. So many ideas generated. And it was like, oh. Like what? Can you give us any examples of ideas generated from a reception? No. Oh. They're, they're <laughs> having their turn. But. They'll come out. He got them. He got them. What about you? Where, where do you find ideas? What sets you up for it? Me, it's lots of input. And meanwhile, while you're writing, you, writing your ideas, we're going to move to the next part, and it's the plan. Now, here's where I many times get in trouble. I stay in the idea phase. I stay, oh, let's collect more. I stay writing in my black journal. I stay there because I love ideas. Ideas yeah. will change the world, but they won't change the world without a plan. This is where Susie is a genius. Oh, thank she you. takes a lot of those ideas. Says, "Well, what's the plan? What I'm are like, you going to do? What, what do you mean? What's the plan? How are don't you going to make it happen?" Love this. It's like saying, "Look at this kitchen. There's so many amazing ingredients." And Susie says, "Shall we make a meal?" I'm like, well, "I hadn't thought of that." <laughs> so this is the plan phase. You got to make a plan. So in the midst of making a plan, uh, lots of things are happening. So. Um, one of the, one of the um, concepts that really help us in make a plan is to fail forward. This is the idea of not having to come out with perfection. 
many times we get stuck in the idea phase or we, we, we don't plan, we don't make a strategy, we don't make a design because we're afraid of the failing or the imperfection. So if we go into the plan going like, it might take a lot of times to get there, I might have to fail, 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 fail forward so I can get there, then that's going to make a difference. Otherwise, we're going to be overcome by these, these three up here by fears that will paralyze us, by procrastination that will tell us, oh, I can make it happen another day. Like, I'll just think, think, think about it, but I won't make it happen. Or self-doubt. Those are the three main ways, uh, fears, procrastination, self-doubt, together with um, just the need to feel perfect, that many times we don't make a plan and we don't move it past the idea phase. Yeah, and I think... We have to understand the importance of failure, especially, I think, in the church. We don't teach people to fail. We almost equate failure with sin. They're different things. Yeah. Sin is sin. Sin will not move you to a good place. Failure almost always will make your story a better story. For instance, if I was to say, you know, the other day I did, I did this and it worked perfectly and now I have this. That's not a good story. There, there's People are going to go, I don't want to hear that story because in my life, that doesn't go that way. But if I say, yesterday I did this and it just it exploded or it was stolen or something happened to it. Susie yesterday was making waffles. Oh. <laughs> now Susie this made, is a terrible. Susie made waffles today. She, she put the ingredients. That were delicious. In ingredients in, went in the waffle iron. What came out? We put peanut butter on them and we ate them. Perfect. Yesterday, she put in some some sour milk and some sour um, cottage cottage cheese, cheese from our traveling, and and it it exploded. It ran everywhere. It oozed. It oozed. We spent two and a half hours cleaning the kitchen. We have no idea what happened, but it went everywhere. It was a fail. I had to take a a um, chopstick and I had to go through every little hole for and an I took hour. Toothbrush on each of the little grades. It was terrible. But you know what? We're going to tell that story much more than the story of today. <laughs> I don't know. The waffles that, were great today. I'm telling that story. That story was better. There was a fail that moves us to a better story. Today we can rejoice on the good stuff because of yesterday. Never, ever, um, forget the failure yeah. because even the moral failure can move us to that place of a better story. And honestly, when you just look at those three things up top, yesterday I had the exploding waffles. I poured it in, it oozed out. I thought, oh, I put too much batter in the waffle maker. It was in a volcano experience. It was just like oozing out and frothy and I don't know, whatever was, was this Usually spoiled milk makes amazing waffles, but yesterday, mm -mm. made TNT. So it just went all everywhere. So this morning I woke up thinking like waffles, when I have waffles, then I, it, it like goes in my stomach in the perfect way and I'm having a great day. And here we are having a great day. Great day. But before I made waffles this morning, I thought, do I know how to make waffles anymore? Should I just wait that self doubt? Should I just wait and try waffles another day, not on a doozy live day, just in case? That would be procrastination. I don't know if I can make waffles. It was like fear, should I or not? And I thought, well, if I do it again and it oozes out again or it's whatever, I just unplug it. I won't have time to clean it up, but I'm going to go for it. And this was like the fail forward potential i didn't i didn't stop myself from doing it because so when your waffles explode make a plan what's a new idea how do we do this differently maybe we'll just milk the cow instead of using the cow milk from a year ago i don't know but we need to make a plan Sounds like fail a forward move forward when i think of make a plan and fail forward i think of thomas edison and we recently heard an expanded version of his story so he is the guy who invented the light bulb. Like who has a light bulb in their home? Who uses a light bulb every day? Most all of us. Um, some of the people in the um, 
Global South, for example, might not, but most people in the Western world with electricity, they use a light bulb. Well, Thomas if Edison- If we're camping, we might not use one either. We did use a light bulb with a battery oh, in our flashlight or our, or our um, lantern, right? But he, he tried to make that light bulb for over 1,000 fails. 2,000. 2,000 fails. fails. So over 1,000, 2,000. What if you would have stopped at 1,001 or 1,500? We would not have a light, a light bulb. So people who invent or f who go for things, many, they have many fails or many unsuccessful attempts. And we need to stop the fears and not procrastinate and have courage with the needs and the purpose and the ideas that God is given and flowing through Failure us. Failure isn't a step backwards. It's another step forward towards success if we take that step. All right, I'd love so we have, to. We got something from Darene here. Okay, Darene says, I generate ideas when I'm usually taking a oh, bath. yes, yes. Haha, <laughs> kind of weird, but mostly when I'm alone or in a place far from distractions so or the crowd. Thank so you good. for putting that there. I one time saw in this store a journal that was waterproof pages and it was made specifically for people who get their ideas in the bathtub. So I don't know if you can find one of those, but that would be helpful for me in the shower. That's great. Waffles yummy. So we've gone all the way down. We have one more step to take in the design uh, phases and design thinking of our life. Okay. Go from plan. And while you're doing that, would love to encourage you to share how you go for it and fail forward without just getting stuck in the idea phase. What helps you? What helps you go for plan and potentially even do it versus getting stuck? Not plan B. This is plan two thousand and one. Yeah, sometimes. just go, go, go. Live life by design. Do it. Tell normally, us about that. normally that will be part of your purpose because you may have failed, but your purpose hasn't changed. So you can because I have this purpose, I'm going to continue. Mm -hmm. And here's what a lot of people don't get to. They do the ideation, they do the plan, but they don't do it. They don't Something roll it out. stops them. Many times it's, what will people think? Mm. Who knows? You can't read someone else's mind, but you do it. You, you take those steps to design your life. And we just recently gave Susie a new haircut. What do you think? We, we had no idea what this was going to end up looking like, but it ended up great. Now, one of the phrases Susie said was, if it doesn't, it'll grow very different than me. Okay? <laughs> it doesn't grow. It grows. Do it. And, and color as well. Five weeks ago, I had red hair, and I wanted to transition into blonde. So this was the design to go towards blonde highlights. And, and – one thing that I needed to fail forward in is red doesn't go away like that. Red takes a long, long time. So I dyed my hair three different times and I used purple shampoo and a toner and all kinds of things to get it and going out in the sun also. Thank you, Lara. She says it looks great. It looks great. Thank you, Kim. She says gorgeous. Appreciate it. Yeah, I love change and this is the change for now and I just had to do it. You did it. Make the plan and do it. I had a lot of fail forwards to get where it is today. It will continue to transform, but this is where we're at today. I love this phrase that we have at the bottom. Your life will become what you do now. So often we're looking to say, what I want to do in the future is, no, what you're doing today mm -hmm. will cause that in the future to happen. There is a ripple effect. If we just live our life by default now and say, someday I'm going to design it, 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 it's not going to happen. Yeah. We have to take the initiative now. We need to say, here is my purpose. We need to say, what are the ideas? What are the things I can do, either by myself or in a community? If you're in a community that's always saying no, Ooh. change your community. Yeah. You won't change that. But if you are in a community that's pressing you down, saying, do not be yourself, be somebody yeah. else, that's not a Jesus community. And you need to move to a place where you are able to exchange ideas, yeah. that people will work with you. And here is a plan. Let's, let's try this. I love Andy Stanley in their church because every, every three months, they shut down a ministry. Why? Because it's three months. 
It may be the strongest ministry going. They shut it down. Why? Because there's new ideas. There's they a new plan. Give it a break and they roll it out with new design and new plans. Some people are still doing the same thing they did 30 years ago, 40 years ago. No, sometimes you just shut things down, get some new ideas, new fresh momentum, new voices into it, make new plans and do it. Because we realize our life will become what we do now. Darene says, when my intended plan fails, I just move forward and learn from the failures or mistakes. An evaluation of lessons I learned from my failure is so helpful. One of the books we just listened to, and also our son Josiah says, learn how to be rejected. Learn how to be put down. Learn how to fail. Because when we develop resilience in that space, we will go for the things that God is helping us design in our life. If we otherwise, we're going to get stuck with procrastination, fear, frozen. Any of those things are going to just stop us. Don't get stuck. One of one of our theme actually for this year, 2020, is courageous imagination. And it has to do with exactly what we're talking about here. Living life by design, not default. In that, we need to imagine it. And then we need to have the courage to do it, just like we're talking about here. If we don't, if we only imagine, and Ephesians 3.20 says, God wants to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. He wants to do more. This is the do it. This is the action. Yes, we need to imagine. Yes, we need to design and purpose and need. But then we need to go for it and do it. The plan that we've put out there. Yeah, I, I recently was talking. This is the whole thing of change and and how momentum is needed. I recently had a guy ask me the question. So, did you grow up in a home that was always free thinking and and ahead of the curve and and in a, in a real progressive church or whatever? No, no, I didn't. Our our home was very conservative. My parents were very conservative. There was a lot of things we couldn't do. There was, our church had a little black book. You couldn't read a, a newspaper on Sunday, and you couldn't go to the circus, even though we did. There was a lot of things you couldn't do. I am not there anymore, and you know what? Neither are my parents. There is this, there is this refreshing, fresh yeah. air yeah. that that in our that faith, breathe. we need to move forward. If if we are still stuck at the place we were in our faith when, in our twenties or thirties or wherever you are, we're stuck. There, there is new awareness. The word of God is 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 alive and active, and, and it is revealing new things all the time. And so as we design our life, do not design your life to a place that's stuck because you know what? I'm going to get another phone call, and someone's going to say, would you do another magic show? I'm going to have to start all over. I'm going to have to redesign it. I won't do the same one twice, right. just like our living room. We designed this and look around. It needs to be redesigned. Yep, coming we need soon. to continually be designing, redesigning, re-looking at where do I need to be today with my life. And Laura is a perfect example here in your note. Thank you for sharing. She says, I like to inspire people, but I can only do that when I when I'm also inspired. Yes. So I have an idea, but I cannot plan that because you cannot you cannot plan to be inspired. So, yes, yeah, set yourself up. What is it that is, is going to take? What is it that it's going to take to be able to allow you to go for whatever it is that you need to design and do? Inspiration is so important. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we oftentimes focus on perspiration, just do the work. <laughs> but we need inspiration. That's right. And Irene says, thanks for the suggestion about the waterproof journal. She might go for that one. So designing your life. It's your responsibility. We have given you a tool. This is a formula that works for us. You may have a different it's tool. It's design thinking that we're applying to life. Great. No problem. But our encouragement is you need to do it. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life. Life. Why did he say this? Because there was a need. There was a need in the world. The world, especially the Jewish world, had become so much about just obey. Mm -hmm. Just do what you're told. Mm -hmm. Just be more religious. Just protect the faith. Sound familiar? Yeah. yeah. Jesus came into that and he said, the thief, and he's talking about religious leaders, these control freaks. 
They came to steal, kill, and destroy. It's not about Satan. This verse is not at all about Satan. It's about the religious leaders that are controlling life. But he is saying, but I have come because there's a need, and my purpose is I have come that you may have life. life. You, you read the Gospels, all kinds of ideas. I mean, just think of this. Take a piece of bread and a, a little glass of wine or grape juice, whatever you prefer, and that represents mm -hmm. the death and resurrection of God. Wow, what an idea. There was a plan. The, the, the Word of God, the New Testament, acts as a plan. But if we stop there and we don't do it, there's no design. Mm -hmm. It's simply default. So designing your life with this design thinking here, uh, it can be big picture and it can also be small details. For example, big picture. What is the need? People need to have life and have it to the full. Our purpose in the Fully Alive Revolution and in this season of our life specifically is to help people live fully alive as they love their life, their world, and their God. Know who they are and live for it. So ideas, oh, those ideas are humming generally. Courses, doozy live, resources, coaching, personal connections with people. Plan. What is the plan? We have this incredible group of what you call them tribal leaders. They're all people in their 20s from around the world. We meet about every two weeks just to do ideas and mm -hmm. plan. It, it is such a refresh. They're reverse mentoring us. It's so good. And that helps us in our purpose because of the need in the world. Then we plan, then we do it. Now, we're doing a lot of fail forward. So we've been doing these doozy live almost every week since the first part of January. We've two weeks. Yep. Two weeks out of out of all of these months. We're going into almost seven full months of doing doozy live every Tuesday. Thank you for joining. Those of you who keep coming and, and are connecting in either live or um, by replay or in YouTube, and that's awesome, but we are doing it. We're failing forward. We've learned so much. Honestly, we were doing this online stuff, rolling it out for two months before coronavirus hit, and all the world had was online. So in that space, many people came to us with a need. They had a purpose, but they didn't have ideas of how, and we could help them make plans and allow them to do it. So those are specific ways that as we're going for this design in life, that we can actually roll it out and help others do that too. So now what? We have five minutes left, and we just want you to know there are three steps that you can begin taking. The first is ask yourself, are you living by design or default? You need to realize the need for yourself. Ask yourself that question. And be, be very vulnerable. Don't lie to yourself. If it's by default, admit that. If half it's by default, if, if maybe your work life is default and your Christian life is not, just do a little bit of evaluation. All the sectors of your Step life. one, ask design or default. Step two, begin to think about your purpose. What is the purpose for you? 60% of you do not yet have a statement about your purpose. Maybe begin to formulate your statement, and we can help you in the Fully Alive Revolution. Uh, we we um, By the end of the first week or the second week of the Fully Alive Revolution, everyone will have a statement that they've created. So I just want to encourage you, be a part of the revolution. Right now we're meeting on, on this Facebook group, Fully Alive Revolution, and we can help you to continue with that space about your purpose. Begin to think about your purpose. And step three. Step three, and see, you are, we're making momentum already. Step one, step two, step three, <coughs> let us help you. Ideas, plan, do it. We're life coaches. We love to help people move forward. This is what the whole Fully Alive Revolution is about. And it may be a little bit confusing for, for you. Um, you can put that back up. Sorry, I hit something else. Uh, but the Fully Alive, we've been talking about it as an idea. Then we made it into a Facebook page, but it's going to become a membership that people will actually give each month to be part of a community that stimulates and focuses and encourages and, and challenges one another to live fully alive. And that will have ripple effects. 
And that's going to open up in September. I'll show it to you in another screen. In just All right. A well, you're already doing the poll. Good job. Which area is most difficult for you? Is it the ideas? Is it the plan? Or is it doing it? And 50% of you say ideas. And 50% of you say the plan. Thank you for voting. If you haven't had a chance to vote, go ahead and do that. But this is what you said. 50-50 on ideas and plan. Wow. It's great. I think, I think I'm with you great on one of those too. Yeah, thank great you so much for just sharing that in that in there as well. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, slide. Oh, here we go. So we're asking you. If you're at a place in your life of transition, if you're at a place, and this is not age specific, we're opening this up really to, to anyone over 18, but there's going to be a few exceptions. Some, Maybe some of you here that are under 18, we're going to give you a special invitation because you're ready. But we're looking for people who are ready to say, I want to live fully alive. I want to design my life. And over the next five weeks, we're going to look at one issue every week on Doozy Alive that we're going to be going deep in. Here we're just basically just taking the top off it. In Fully Alive Revolution, we're going to help you specifically through small group, through one-on-one -on -one coaching, through training to know this is who I was created to be and we're going to give you permission to live you. That's what the Fully Alive Revolution is all about. It starts in September and it goes till forever. <laughs> Um, and we're just uh, we're just inviting you, if you are interested in being a part of the Fully Alive Revolution, it will begin 1st of September. We have a limited number of people that can do it. 40 will be in this group. We're only going to open it up for people twice a year. And we're going to have a um, founder's launch in September. If you are interested, more information is going to come each week here. Uh, potentially within the next two weeks, you will be already ready to sign up. But we just want to get an initial feel. If any of you are interested in joining the Fully Alive Revolution and you want more information, then please reach out to us on any of the this social is media. This is the commitment no? to them. Or, to know. or you can, um, you can, dot com. This is the there's best our, way. There's our email. Connect at doozy.com. Send us that or any of the socials will be fine as well. And we, we just want to get a, a list feel. of people who are interested because we, we're ready. It's it's time to go places. It's yeah. time to open the doors and let people be fully alive and show them what it looks like and encourage them not only to live it, but to come back and help other people be full. A revolution is, is not just a revolt. It's a turning. It's it is. A, a, it's a yeah. full turn. And that's what we want to see that, that I, yeah, politics can be great and all these things can be great, but I believe it's when people make that turn and help other people to make that turn that fully change alive, actually lasts. Fully alive people helping other people be fully alive as well. Couple couple questions here in the chat. Doreen says, courageous imagination, love it. That is the theme of our year. The book is not yet written, but it will be. It it's, will it's be. It's going to be a camp in two weeks for for MKs from around the world. so And it will eventually be happens. a course, and it will eventually be a book. It'll be a part of Fully Alive Revolution. Coming soon. Laura has a question. So, okay, I have an idea and a question to you, Dan. Mm -hmm. Do you also write stuff down, which you read in the Bible, like stories of Esther, Joseph, or Peter? Great question. This one, I write things down all through the day. These are ideas. This one, I write things down in the morning and at night. So I am writing things down all the time. If for some reason I don't have this, then I write it on here, which is it goes into here, which goes into here. So yes, I write everything down. Two reasons why. Number one, I forget because <laughs> there, it's a train. If I, if I miss this car, the next one is coming really quick. So I got to write this down so I can catch the next one as well. So I'm writing that down. And because I love ideas, I love collecting them. All right. I'm just looking at the poll again. I missed looking at it before. But this is what you said right here. Interesting. 16% ideas, 16%, oop, 16 ideas, 16% plan, and 66% of you said doing it is the most do. difficult. Yep, very true. Thank you so very much true. for voting. Wow. So we will encourage you if you're a person right now in your life and you're like, I need I need a group of people that move together no matter what age you are, uh, we're going to invite you to contact us for more information about the Fully Live Revolution. 
Next week, we're going to be going in past the, the whole uh, purpose into the, the passion. What? How do you actually love yourself? How do you discover who God made you to be mm -hmm. so that you can open that door up? And, mm -hmm. and so that's where we're going. I don't even know what the title of it is yet. Coming soon. We know what it's about. It's about God has created you as a puzzle piece, a very unique puzzle piece. How do you find your fit? Yeah. Laura says, doesn't it stress you out when you always have to write things down, Dan? Oh, no. It stresses me out when I don't write them down. And <laughs> then I you can let go of it. I forget. He can let go of it. I mean, if I if I meet a person, I guarantee you, if I meet you, Laura, I'm I actually did this with you. I wrote down when when we first met at PST, I wrote down your name as Laura. And I was trying to remember Laura. And then you came and said, it's not Laura, it's Laura. And and I oh, and I had to go back to my book. If I'm gonna remember something, I gotta write it down. So no, it doesn't stress me out. <laughs> it stresses me out when I don't write it down. Thank you so much for joining us live. You know your life is a remarkable story, a, an adventure that only you can create. We exist to motivate and equip you to live fully alive. Today in this doozy live, we've been talking about living life by design, not by default. May you live fully alive. As you love your life, your world. And your God. Yes. My name is Dan. And my name is Susie. And together, together we're, we're a doozy. doozy. Live fully. And love fully. Thanks for joining us. And this will be available on, on uh, replay, replay and YouTube. On YouTube. So God bless. Any other any other comments? I think we're really. Yeah. Fun. You just. We'll stick around. For Laura says one. really. Really. <laughs> really. I can go back to the book and I can find your name and your name again in the book. Oh, the thing we have forgot. Takeaway. Please, before oh. we go, please write your takeaway. So what is that? What is it that you captured from this time being here together? Something that is new for you, something that you learned, maybe something you thought about. As a result of spending this hour, what is something that you're grabbing and you're going to take with you? We would love to know what it is, and we would love if you. I would can write see there's a down. whole bunch of you still watching that haven't made a comment. This would be a good time to put just a takeaway down. <laughs> and in the middle, you're taking away something, huh? Okay, so what is your takeaway? One of my takeaways, one of my takeaways is that I need to not be stuck in the ideas and the planning stage because we're spending so much time doing that and spend a lot more time for the action, for the, the rollout. So Lara says, my takeaway, a reminder, your life will become what you do now. Thank you, Lara. Lara, I want you to know it's in one of these books, but I'm not gonna take the time to okay, find I, out. It's probably gonna be that one right there. Your name is probably there. We'll try to find it and take a picture of it and send it to you. Because I think that would that would be fun for you. Uh, Kim says, permission to love you. That's good. Permission to love yourself. I'm taking that as awesome. Laura says, thanks, Dan. Anybody else? What's your takeaway? We'd love to see um, what you're learning. Hannah says, I'm the same as Susie. I spend a lot of time thinking of ideas and planning but then not much action. I do have a lot of action, but I need to have more action to go with my ideas and my plan. Preach it. My dad says, my dad says, you two get more done in a day than most of us get done in a month. And I find that very interesting and it might be true. I don't know. That's, two days. that's the way we're wired, isn't it? Michaela, thank you for sharing. You said, be aware of when you are beginning to live life through default and then reevaluate in order to live by design. Far out, boom. I could have said that for all of you. That is a far out quote for sure. So good. One Thank thing, you very one thing much. About for our sharing. life at the moment, we're trying to accomplish three things that matter every day. Three things that matter. These are, every we design day. them and we're going to go for them. Yep. The action step for us is really, really important and crucial in this season. Yeah, Michaela, that's good. You're getting an, you're getting another Lara vote on that. Lots of people do lots and lots of things that maybe don't matter. We want to do a few things that matter a lot. Every day, day by day by day. 
Well, again, thank you for joining us. We will keep the chat open for just a little bit. Um, Dyrene says, takeaway. I love Michaela's takeaway. I copy and paste it. <laughs> That's and good. And you're free to do that. Michaela, you do have that gift. Michaela does have a gift. Um, I'm journeying beautifully with her. Yay! And she, she has a gift of being present in a situation, a space for hours at a time. And she maybe doesn't need to say anything or very much during any of the process. But at the end, she always gives the best caps in a nugget, and she says what we've been saying and helps us remind, remind us. So I'm going to read Michaela's cap as our final, our final takeaway and reminder of this whole living life by design, not by default. She says, be aware of when you are beginning to live life through default and then reevaluate in order to live by design. So you could have skipped this whole hour with us and <laughs> just got that. It wouldn't have been as rich with depths and That's feelers going pretty, down, but she rich. caps it. She caps pretty it rich. so nicely. Once again, Michaela, you've done it. Thank, Thank you, you all of you for joining. This is a conversation. This is an interactive experience on Juicy Life, and you made it what it is. If you in, join us at two o'clock, four more hours, we got another one. Join us at two o'clock. We got a special interview with a guy called Chris von Baren who is a young man who is very much designing his life in the world of international business. We're going to be interviewing here, looking at these same uh, steps and seeing how he is using those to really move forward in his life. Again, thank you. And we're going to sign off. God bless you and have an awesome day. It's been amazing having this time on Doozy Live together. Do you want the last word? No, I want you to have it today. Okay. Thanks for coming. It's amazing.